Welcome to Dwell in the Word. Today is Friday. It is August 20th, and today we're going to be looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 through 31. But first, a prayer for illumination from Hughes Elephant Old. Let us pray. Blessed God, eternal goodness, righteousness, and truth forever. Blessed you are, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grant to us that pure and holy spirit, that our hearts may be right, with your law written on them, that the inspiration of our thoughts may be true, and all our ways truly righteous. Pour down your spirit, that we might be lifted up into your presence, that we might dwell in righteousness, and live forever, bathed in your truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, as I said, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, today verses 26 through 31. Hear the word of the Lord. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. What we have read today continues some of the thoughts from what we read on Wednesday. But I want us to take a look at where this is all leading. Look at that last line in verse 31. Let the one who boasts, boasts in the Lord. All of this idea that Paul is putting forward here is this idea that God is taking those who can't do for themselves and he is doing for them and he is raising them up to be his people. And so I'm drawn back to an idea that Martin Luther taught, the idea of the theology of the cross versus the theology of glory. Now, for us, we sort of get confused with that language, but the idea that Martin Luther is teaching is that there's a theology of glory, and he means like the glory of people, the glory of man. And so the idea is that we conquer. We're the ones who are great. We will do this on our own. We will be glorified. Let's go. But then there is actually the theology of the cross, The idea that God is glorified in weakness, that God takes the foolish and makes them wise, that he takes those who are seen as low in the world and raises them up. That is what God does for us in the cross. And and we see this in the cross itself, right? The cross was a scandal. The cross was shameful. But it's how God saved his people. It's how he created this people for himself that he might be glorified. And so we see this idea here. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. None of you had glory in and of yourself. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. Not many started out this life uh, at the top of the heap, right? But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God is taking that which is low and bringing it up because he is a God who builds people up through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and he brings them to salvation. We have to be low to be saved because we have to understand that we can't save ourselves. We have to understand that we are incapable. We have to understand this because otherwise we will think that we can somehow save ourselves. And so we read in verse 28 that God chose what is low and despised in the world, things such as the cross, even things that are not to bring to nothing things that are. Those things that are, that are low and have nothing of value within themselves. Those things that are despised. Those are the things that are going to bring to nothing. Those things that are high and exalted in the world. And why is that? So that no human being might boast in the presence of God. In the presence of God, we are incapable of boasting. Because we cannot save ourselves. We are sinners. We need his grace. We need his mercy. We need that theology of the cross. We need God coming down to us and pulling us out of the mire and bringing us up to himself. That is what we so desperately need. And again, all this comes to the point that we have no place to boast. And so at the end, what do we do? If we're going to boast... We're going to boast in the Lord because he is the one who has rescued us. He is the one who has saved us. 
And so as we think about what this passage means for us, it's, it's important that we always remember that we come from lowly stock, that we come as sinners who were dead in trespasses and sin, and God comes down to us and rescues us because then we will remember that we boast in the Lord and we can proclaim the gospel saying, we were weak, but God has made us strong. And so may we step out into the world daily, remembering that we were weak in and of ourselves and God has made us strong, that we might proclaim, that we might boast in the Lord, that others might hear this amazing news, that we have been rescued by his grace, we've been saved from our sin, and we have salvation and the forgiveness of sins. Let us go to prayer. Merciful Father, we praise and thank you for the grace that you have shown to us in Christ. You have chosen to take the weak in the world to shame the strong. You choose that which is low and despised in the world to bring to nothing the things that the world exalts. May we never boast in anything but the work of Jesus on our behalf, through which we are saved by grace through faith. And we ask, O Lord, that by your word and spirit today, we would be mindful of your holy gospel. Use that good news in us to spur us on in holiness, that we might be your faithful witnesses in your world. We pray that the Holy Spirit would convict us of areas of sin and of unbelief in our lives, and that this would drive us to repent and to further rely on you to save us and to grow us in sanctification. We lift all things up to you, for you have brought us into union with Jesus, who became to us the wisdom of God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption. And we pray all these things in his holy name. Amen. All right, have yourself an excellent Friday and an even better weekend. Take care.